everyone, R.J. Fritz out and about in sunny southwest Florida. It's beautiful here. Sanibel Island to be precise. Hey, Mr. Fritz, do you want to buy some seashells? Well, certainly. Let, let me take a look here. Oh, my gosh. What will you take for these? Would you take a buck? Yes, please. There you go. She sells seashells by the seashore. Boy, and do you find the seashells on Sanibel Island in southwest Florida. While spending time lately in southwest Florida, I've encountered just about everything. From encounters with gators with my old friend Dirk Hansen. Blimey, I'd go arm wrestle that critter, but I think he'd have me for lunch in about two seconds. To skimming through the Everglades on an airboat. But nothing comes close to the variety of Sanibel Island. Once I cross the causeway, I'm transported to another world. When I come to work every morning, you kind of get this ah feeling when you come across the causeway. It's laid back, it's very geared for the environment and conservation. You can tell in just the look of the island. You know, there's mom and pop stores and restaurants, low signage, it looks very old Florida. Just the way I think Ding Darling and conservationists would have wanted it to be. But it's a completely different place that, than you've ever been to. You almost feel like you're on an island um, out in the Caribbean, somewhere far away, but you're here still in the United States. Sanibel is world renowned for its multitude of seashells. Now let me ask you this, Jose, why is Sanibel such a mecca for the shellers? Well, Sanibel is a special place. Is if you look at the shape of the island, the island is more, uh, it's, it's shaped like a boomerang, like a, a curved uh, um, part of the coast running from east to west. Mm -hmm. um, that combined with the fact that the water is shallow for a long, long distance away from the beach. Um, and the storms in the winter, all that combined makes for, you know, the, the, the accumulation of shells that we see here. I heard someone say that this is like the perfect storm for shelling, isn't it? Absolutely, it is. The key for successful sea shelling is being there when the tides are right. And it might even mean setting the alarm a bit early. So you have to get there at the right time, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You have to be there at low tide. And, uh, and sometimes that low tide that uh, exposes more of the beach uh, will happen at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and guess what? We'll have a lot of people there with flashlights and looking for shells, and, and uh, that's, that's uh, what happens here. Now, these seem to be just about everywhere on Sanibel, don't they? The, the Florida fighting conchs, yes, they're very interesting, and there's a lot of variation, you know, within the same the same species. This is a small conch shell, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there a, are bigger ones? There are bigger, that, like, such as uh, the horse conch, yeah. which is the Florida state shell. We actually have the world record here, and it's more than two feet. You long. have a world record? Now, this is the world record in what, beauty or size? Well, or in size. It's in the, size? the biggest, longest um, um, horse conch ever found, and it was actually found by um, a, a local guy here scuba diving off Sunnibel. I got five bucks. Will you take five bucks for it? Uh, well, you have to make it a little better for uh, <laughs> ten. <laughs> Among the sites you want to see on Sanibel Island is Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge. The JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge is one of the treasures of Sanibel Island. We get nearly 800,000 visitors here. They come for the beaches. When we and come back, we find out we've got the how they and live and, and they come to our free education center that's open daily and head out on the wildlife drive. You can canoe, you can kayak, you can bring your bike, you can take a tram, you can just take your car Shows and on. do some nature photography, right. grab a pair of binoculars on loan at the visitor center. There's so much. Welcome back to Life of the Max from the IDS Here Tower, the 50th and floor. The Historical National and beautiful views. views. They may not be beautiful views down in Guatemala. Not so when you live and function see, every day inside a dump. It's been going on down there for years. And what Ding himself is quite a story. Jay Norwood Ding Darling was an editorial cartoonist, and his nickname, Ding, comes from the last name. If you take a couple letters out of Darling, it becomes Ding, and that was his famous signature. He did die in 1962, so he's been gone a long time, but his cartoons remain priceless and timeless. He had the foresight of people like Teddy Roosevelt um, and Ding Darling. I mean, they were amazing forethinkers into the environment. He drew the first duck stamp in 1934, so he was a duck hunter, and he believed that hunters 
should give back to the land. It's been going on down there for years, and what is amazing is how the people function at work. Now we've all heard of Bert Lancaster as the Birdman of Alcatraz, but let me introduce you to Libby, the Bird Lady of Sanibel Island. Uh, these little the guys have all got red unbelievable. The views are not so great from the outside looking in uh, for our next story. People one. in Guatemala that literally He's live in dumps. Sometimes aggressively. How it works and why and they choose to do it and how they function at a higher level than feathers. you might imagine will probably surprise you. And giving scalp massages still in the South American rainforest. And he's when we come back, an oh my gosh, husband, about so wow. Doggy yoga. <laughs> you got to see it to understand it. Like Stay with us. Cat. No one can live without knowing what a cockatoo tail feels like. Now you Welcome back to Life of the Max. Welcome back to Life of the Max. Yes, they can pamper it pretty good. And why would you do it just for I Welcome back here, to Life to the Max. Um, we know how much you ago. love your pets and, and your dogs, but how about this? How about a doggy yoga class? No That's right, a doggy us, yoga class. And and so I yes, love, they and exist. I've been doing it ever since. And Mary can. After I retired, we started coming there. down for six months, One more time and that. they got me. Welcome well, back to Life to the Max. Yes, there is a place where you can bring your dog. Don't get a that bird for your home. Part Don't of your get a bird for your make home. Sure they get what you get. It is a doggy, you ready for this? It is a doggy yoga class. So That's right, like a doggy yoga class. They, they bond, they're flock animals, they bond to somebody and then they don't want them anymore. We'll and wrap it's up this a edition of Life the Max. Some you. of them pluck their feathers, some of them stop eating. Uh, uh, rescue right? centers are filled with them. Now, remember, birds have Welcome two toes Welcome back to Life of the Max from the 54 of the IDS Tower. So Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. They remember to look us up on Facebook and like us if you would. Plus, you can always you check us out on the net at lifetothemax.tv. That's lifetothemax.tv. Target field not far away. So Wonder if I can get one to home plate. Oh my gosh, how many birds do you have? Thanks for watching tonight's show. Right. See you back here next week, everybody. Uh, now we're in the family of Amazons, known for being territorial I it with me. and aggressive. Hi, pretty. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Come on. Come on, Axel. Pretty bird. Pretty. Hi, Axel. Pretty bird. Come on. Come on. Pretty bird. You know what I like? The the young watch, watch. the young cue the young kids really are more into the, having the birds on them than the grown-ups. They're not afraid. Yes, they aren't haven't they? had a chance to have bad experiences. I've had little babies, uh, ten months old, stick out their arms and smile. I don't have time to train for tricks, but if they do something I think is marvelous, I give them a peanut and make a fuss. So he has that marvelous trick called bite your foot. I think uh, we have Mike Tyson ear. taking my ear off. Won't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tony, he won't. He won't. He's just nibbling in love, I'm sure. Okay, bud. Well, thank you very much. And I, you know, I think it's amazing that you do this and just do it for the love of birds. I Your do. life is for the birds, isn't it? I do. And I do it so that people don't get birds and ruin some bird's life. An island that offers so much and more. And there you have it, Sanibel Island, another must-see on the Citrus Trail. R.J. Fritz, out and about. Life to the Max is brought to you by Life Touch. Photography for a lifetime.